Welcome back. This video will give you a tutorial for how to write your research paper. So chances are your professor, your teacher said you're going to write a research paper this semester and you took them at their word and all you want to do is write your paper. And what you really need to do, and I've said this before, is do your research and then write a paper about what you did. So hopefully you've watched the video for how to format your research paper. I'm going to give you a little demo here of something that's formatted for a scientific journal manuscript. But honestly, if you're just even looking at a high school paper, um, starting out with your format will save you a lot of headache later on. So you'll see in the center of the screen that I've got some blue type and some black type. I like to color code uh, work that I have left to do or highlight it so that I remember to get everything done. Um, oftentimes by the time I'm submitting a paper or sending it out someplace, it's kind of a mad dash at the end. So I choose friendly colors like blue and green because they're much friendlier than looking at angry, angry red. But um, anyhow, so I have my title page here with page breaks. I've got my blinded title page because that would be a requirement and oops, I better just turn that into something that's blue. Um, and then I've got, oh gosh, if I'm going to have to do an abstract, save that for later and then come down to the beginning of your paper. So when you're going to start to write your paper, assuming you've done your research and you want to start writing your paper, or maybe you're in the early stages of this, you write your paper from the inside out. So where you're going to start is you're going to start with a space for the introduction. And you're going to skip the introduction for a moment and you're going to come right here to the very end of your introduction. And this is formatted like a scientific paper, but I'm going to show you a little hack. Um, if you're not doing a scientific paper, you can still follow a similar format. And it really just, it, it's like a little guide. It takes your hand and leads you right on through. So at the end of the introduction, you're going to say, here's the purpose of this paper. Here is my main hypothesis. Here's what I'm going to do in my research, or here's what I did in my research. And then you dig into the methods. So if you're writing a paper about an actual study that you did, or you're writing a review, or you're writing any other type of um, appraising, uh, whether it's books, journal articles, anything like that, explain in your methods, lead off by telling your reader what type of study this is. Is it qualitative? Is it quantitative? Did you do um, uh, you know, a prospective where you enrolled subjects? Maybe you went and got five different historical books on, um, I don't know, the health of U.S. presidents, and you're going to uh, analyze that. So it would be a review. So say the type of study and then give some indication of where you got your information. Now, if you're not writing a scientific paper, you're not going to be required to do the methods section, but go through this in your head anyway, because that's going to tell you what sort of resources you have to work with. So what qualified for data or for research subjects? What wouldn't qualify? So did you get books, let's say, that were only published in English and French? Did you, um, uh, instead of using journal articles, did you only use books? Uh, do you have date limits? So setting that inclusion exclusion criteria where you went and got them. And so if you're writing a review, you have to say what library you went to. And, and really the methods are so someone could go out and replicate your study. Um, or in, in case of your teacher, they could evaluate how thorough you were. If you enrolled human subjects, you're going to put the information here. And then if you have a plan for statistics, data analysis. So method sections of research articles, just follow this time honored format. And this is a real short outline. And if you're unsure, get a couple articles in your discipline and just have a look at them, put the methods, lay them out, put them side by side, and you'll start to see the patterns. So starting with the methods, and again, if you're not writing a journal article or you know a scientific paper, uh, at least have this in your head. Where'd you get your stuff? And believe me, if you're taking a semester course, your professor is somehow leading you through this and expecting you to go get resources anyway. Then you get to the big part, the results section. So this is your actual research. This is what you found. So, oops, I got a little typo here, criteria. Um, uh, if you did a, an actual study that you're writing about, you want to give some indication of how big it was, um, how many articles you, if you're document, let's say systematic review, you found 10,000 articles and you narrowed it down to five that met your inclusion right here, whatever that is. Um, but it always happens with systematic reviews. Um, but basically you want to say is, is what you had to work with and what you found. This is where you're going to extract theme. So if you're writing a paper on the history of the health of U.S. presidents, let's say, you can give yourself a guide of starting with three big things that you found in your research. 
And basically you're going to explore theme one, theme one, theme two, theme three. This is like, I guess, the things in the Dr. Seuss books, right? And this actually can even apply to any other sort of study that you've done. You don't have to disclose every single thing that happened and every time a person's nose itched or somebody sneezed, you just need to identify basic themes and then explore those for your reader. Think about who you're intending to write to. So if you're looking at the health of U.S. presidents, maybe your first theme is, oh, okay, U.S. presidents, they were all men. Um, well, you know, big surprise. But then, And then you're looking um, at perhaps different um, health issues that occurred in the population over time. Or maybe um, uh, you're looking at men and their ages and, and how um, that contributes to health. So you can actually identify those themes. Another theme might be geographically where the presidents were from, what their occupations were before they were presidents, and another theme might be things that happened when they were in office. So you've got those themes and you build out those themes and explore, and as you're writing your paper, you're kind of sketching this out in your head, you're basically just making an outline. And as you're making an outline, then you can insert your citations and your citations will support your work. So the last part is your discussion. And so again, if you're writing a paper for a class, if you skip the methods, just get rid of this here for a second, and you say, I'm going to have an introduction, I'm going to have the results of my research, and I'm going to have some sort of discussion. You really need these three parts in any research paper. So the discussion is really your conclusions and what it means. And so the first part in a scientific paper is, is a, a summary statement. How do we put all this together? And so my U.S. president's example in health might say that uh, a president is considered very valuable to the country. And so while they're in office, they get pretty great health care and have lots of people attending to them. And so that's likely to improve their health, but they're incredibly stressed. And so stress might take a toll. Um, so, you know, something along those lines. Um, but what that also means is that, you know, presidents generally get better health care than the general population, right? So that might be, you know, some kind of a, a, a takeaway from your research. And so that would be what you would put after, you know, what you think all this means is that, you know, they've had great health, whatever you decided to, uh, based upon your research. But again, it's your opinion. And this is where professors get really anxious with students because students tend to not give an opinion. And if you're reading and you're doing research, you're going to have an opinion about what you found. And this is where you want to state that. And really, there's no right or wrong answer. And the biggest problem is when students don't give an answer. So think about that. And then if this is a scientific paper, what's the limitation of your research? Only write one or two things. You don't have to disclose everything. And then clinical implications or future research. But again, if you look at this and you think about the basic components of this, introduction, results, and discussion, Here's my thesis, here my purpose, what it all means. That's every research paper you've ever written. But guess what? We've written all these parts of the paper, and once you're finished, go back up here and write your introduction. And the reason you want to write this last is the introduction is the part that you are telling your reader, here's what I'm presenting to you. And I can guarantee you, if you try and write your introduction first, you're going to be spending a lot of time going back and rewriting it. Uh, or you'll be staring at a blank page. And believe me, I've made that mistake hundreds of times, uh, actually maybe dozens of times because I finally figured out how to write a paper. So summarizing this, you're going to write your paper from the inside out, come up with a hypothesis or a purpose, and give yourself a chance to explore major themes, explore major results of your research, and then decide what it means and state a compelling argument. So hope this was helpful. Happy researching.